coming up on today's show. The Volkswagen ID3 is revealed at last. Tesla engages maximum plaid and takes to racetracks around the world. And Mercedes-Benz goes all in with rapid charging plug-in hybrids that apparently go the distance. These stories and more coming next. Hi folks, welcome back to the weekend roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. We've got a lot of news to cover today, but before we do that, I'd just like to thank everyone on behalf of the entire Transport Evolved team for the 2019 Drive Electric Award we picked up this week from Plug in America. It's an honour to receive it and thanks to everyone who nominated and voted for us. Thanks also to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today at electricauto.org. We start today with the Volkswagen ID3, a car that Volkswagen has been teasing for more than a year, but which finally got its production debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show this week. With a starting price of €30,000 before incentives, the entry-level ID3 offers a range of 330 kilometres from a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack. There's also a mid-range model with a 420 kilometre range and a high-end, high-priced model with 550 kilometres of range. I'll be going into the car in more detail next week on this channel, so keep your eyes peeled. Also getting its official pricing in Frankfurt was the Honda e, which, like the ID3, will be sold as a European-only model. The small city car will go on sale from €29,470 in Germany, a price which includes subsidies, making it more expensive than the Volkswagen ID3. It will come with two different powertrain options, 100 kilowatts or 113 kilowatts, and will have a range of 220 kilometers per charge from its 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Deliveries will start next year. Mercedes-Benz had quite the stand in Frankfurt this week, showcasing the production version of the EQV electric minivan, a rebranded, refreshed Smart EQ family, and some plug-in hybrids that I'll come to later in the show. But perhaps front and centre for the brand was the Vision EQS, a high-performance electrified S-Class derivative with a promised 700 kilometres of range and 350 kilowatt quick charging capabilities. Yes, it is just a show car, but Benz has been pretty quick turning its concepts to production vehicles, so yeah. Tesla has been busy this week taking its Model S onto the racetrack, setting a new track record at the Laguna Seca WeatherTech Raceway for four-door sedans. The track record, one second quicker than the previous one, was made possible by the new Plaid Model S prototype, which is said to have three electric motors and a brand new chassis. It has caused howls of foul play from some sectors online, as it's a prototype, not a production model, and thus they're claiming the record isn't legal. I'm not going to get involved. The production Renault Zoe 50 is now officially being sold across Europe and to coincide with the Frankfurt Motor Show, the company has published some nice new B-roll for folks like us to use. But what you might not know is that Renault has also just started selling the KZE electric SUV in China, a car which offers a 26.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, quick charging capabilities, 271 kilometers of range, and most importantly, a price tag that's less than $8,700 equivalent. Sadly, it's Chinese market only. For now, at least. Byton has officially unveiled the production version of its m Byte SUV. While it says deliveries of the all-electric SUV will begin in next year in China, European and US customers will have to wait until 2021 at least to get one. The entry-level m Byte with a target price of €45,000, will be powered by a single rear-wheel drive motor and offer a range of 360 kilometres. High-end variants will increase that to 435 kilometres per charge. In addition to the track record it's claiming in California this week, Tesla has been busy in Germany too, taking to the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife, as promised, in response to Porsche's four-door electric sedan Trek record as set in the Taycan a few weeks ago. 
Like the car driving at Laguna Seca, the Tesla on track at the Green Hill is a prototype of Tesla's plaid drivetrain and chassis. But in disclosing this, Elon Musk also said something rather strange, calling it a true seven-seat vehicle. This suggests that Tesla's modified chassis does something rather clever with the rear, adding a third row of seats in, well, a sedan. For now, though, it is just a rumor. Mercedes-Benz may have just unveiled some all-new electric models in Frankfurt, but it also unveiled a third-generation plug-in hybrid system for its GLE and GLC SUVs. Traditionally, plug-in hybrid SUVs haven't offered much range or charging capability, but these new third-generation drivetrains offer no loss in luggage capability as well as a 31.2 kilowatt hour battery pack capable of over 100 kilometers of range per charge. Both vehicles also include CCS quick charging, meaning they can really be driven as an EV 99.9% .9 of the time. And now it's time for short shorts. Electrify America and Porsche have confirmed that they have successfully completed the first high-power charging session on the Electrify America network. They charged a production Porsche Taycan at a power level of 270 kilowatts to just 80% state of charge in 22 and a half minutes. Volkswagen confirmed that it's working on a hot hatch variant of the just revealed ID3, noting that while it won't come to the market until 2024, it will have four wheel drive and a performance motor and other R rated badge performance mods. Tesla has begun the retrofit program for owners of Teslas fitted with Autopilot 2.0 and 2.5 hardware that purchased full self-driving at the point of ordering their cars. The hardware upgrade is expected to take some time as there are many, many cars that are technically eligible for it. While the ID3 won't make it to North America, Volkswagen began teasing the ID4 crossover in Frankfurt, showing a camouflaged pre-production variant. It will likely get revealed next year with late 2020 production debut. Tesla has received a patent for a new type of longer lasting battery, which it says will have better performance and cost less to produce. While some chemistries use as many as five additives to the electrolyte, Tesla's new patent uses just two. The London Electric Vehicle Company has showcased a brand new delivery van in Frankfurt that is based on its TX E-City taxi cab. It has the same drivetrain and charger agnostic DC quick charging capabilities and is designed to be used along busy city delivery routes. Tesla has revamped its US solar panel lease program, yes, the one it announced last month, to remove all charges associated with removing the systems. This makes it more affordable for customers and perhaps easier for those who may decide that they will want to move in the not too distant future. Hyundai has unveiled the 45 EV concept in Frankfurt. Named after the Pone Coupe from Concept from the 70s, it previews a potential new model from the brand, but as a concept car, it's pretty low on specs. Elon Musk has confirmed that the 2020 Tesla Roadster is also destined to head to the Nürburgring to set some of its own records. But while the Model S is already there testing its plaid drivetrain, Musk said that the second generation Roadster won't be heading there until sometime next year. Jaguar Land Rover didn't actually have any new electric models this year to showcase in Frankfurt, but during the big reveal for the brand new Land Rover Defender, it teased a tiny bit of the rear of the next generation XJ sedan, noting that the design will be unconventional for the Jaguar brand. Toyota has said that it's working on a solar-powered Prius hybrid that will not require plugging in at all, but will offer up to 56 kilometers of range if parked in the sun. The panels will be capable of providing power while it's in motion and parked. Ford continued previewing its future electric vehicles this week by publishing a new website which shows a special calculator that enables customers to figure out how far they can travel in an electric vehicle. What's interesting is the range quoted by Ford for the upcoming electric Mustang-inspired SUV, 370 miles. Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor have apparently started on a new adventure around the world. This time, they're riding from Argentina to Los Angeles on Harley-Davidson Livewire electric motorcycles. Their support trucks? Rivian R1Ts. And frankly, I am super jealous. I also went to the same school as Ewan McGregor. 
Nissan has apparently showcased its next mass production electric vehicle to dealers in the US. Based on the IMX crossover concept, it's said to have a shorter hood and say sources could have a battery pack capacity somewhere in the 85 kilowatt hour range. Electrify America's Canadian sibling, that's Electrify Canada, is officially putting its electric car charging stations in. It's funded through the same Dieselgate settlement program as Electrify America and is aiming for a similar amount of EV charging coverage. Meanwhile, in the UK, the British government has announced an additional £400 million sterling to accelerate the installation of electric car rapid charging stations across the country. It's all part of the UK's plans to continue to accelerate electric vehicle adoption rates. A Volocopter has received a €50 million Euro investment from Geely, the company that happens to own both Volvo and the London Electric Vehicle Company, as well as others. A Volocopter is still aiming to become the first company in the world to commercialise vertical takeoff and landing air taxis. A Tesla fire with a difference hit the news headlines this week when a video of a jealous man set fire to hit social media. The guy apparently didn't like the fact that someone else had a nice new electric Tesla, but he got caught when he set fire to it. So there is a happy ending. Hyundai unveiled a concept race car this week in Frankfurt in the form of the Velostar N ETCR. It's powered by a mid-mounted all-electric rear-wheel drivetrain. It's already completed initial testing, but will go through some more comprehensive testing in the coming months. Rivian has received an additional $350 million in funding, this time from Cox Automotive. It's a massive conglomerate that includes brands like Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book, and many, many more. It shows yet again that the auto industry is taking Rivian very seriously. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Last week, we showcased that the e-Beetle from German specialists e-Classics was coming to market. Working in collaboration with Volkswagen, they developed a brand new all-electric chassis for the classic Volkswagen Beetle, based off of production Volkswagen e-Up components. Now we know the price of it. €99,000 will get you your very own electric bug built from scratch by e-Classics. But you'll also be able to buy just the running chassis for €39,900 for your own project. Considering what you get, that's actually a lot cheaper than most classic car conversions out there. And finally, if I went through all of the cars that were revealed in Frankfurt this week with some form of electrified drivetrain, I'd be here all weekend. But one car in particular caught my attention, the new concept car from Audi. Looking like it might be more at home on the moon or Mars than planet Earth, the Audi AI Trail Quattro is an all-electric off-roader with massive chunky tyres and a go-anywhere attitude. It looks fun, but I'm going to put this one in the never-make-it-to-production pile. And on this note, it's the end of the show. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Buy us a coffee with Kofi, or buy some merch from our swag store. Thanks, as always, to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show, advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 1967. The Electric Auto Association believes that the future depends on us going electric today. You can find out how to become an EV educator for yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just talk to real world EV owners about what it's like to drive on electrons by going to electricauto.org. We are longtime members of the EAA and we are proud to support this fantastic nonprofit. And before I go, I just want to shout out to National Drive Electric Week. It's just started and there are events taking place all around the world where you can go and find out more about buying and driving plug-in vehicles. I'll be going to one of my local events here in Portland, Oregon, but you should totally check out all of the events near you by going to driveelectricweek.org. There's something for you. I'll be back next week with more great content for you all to enjoy. But until then, behave yourselves and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. Keep evolving!